Yeah, so uh, that goes back with me for a long ways. Um, Michael Bacon, who's an assistant coach at uh, Cooper, uh, was a GA of ours, and uh, we kind of started this deal with Stoffel, uh, the honey badger, man. Can't be trapped. They've tried over and over, uh, and he continues to get out of his cage, man. They've done everything they can, and um, he just always finds a way, you know, um, to get out of whatever predicament he's in. And so um, me and Michael, all, we, we follow each other's scores, you know, quite a bit, and every time one of us wins a close game, man, we always – you know, text a picture of Stoffel, you know, and uh, and so I explained that story to my team. I always carry a picture of Stoffel with me. Uh, when we went through our little losing stretch, man, I had, I had lost my, my Stoffel picture. And so I was sitting there one day and I'm like, you know what? This is why we were losing, man. I don't have Stoffel in my bag. And so uh, I reprinted Stoffel and uh, I went ahead and told the story to the guys. And we talked about it uh, before the Cal Baptist game. And uh, Shoot, the rest is history, man. I mean, uh, so the guys have kind of really bought into it. And uh, I, t I told him before the, the game at Lamar, I said, you know, I talked to Stoffel before the game. And uh, he told me that he's, he's got our back, but he really would like a vacation. And, and uh, we didn't give him that vacation Saturday either. So he's, he's still working for us. But uh, Stoffel, so I'm, I'm, all, I'm into stuff like that, man. I, I, but Stoffel's a big one. It's close to me, man. And, um, you know, like I said, and Michael's obviously a really good friend of mine. And so it's something that, uh, that I shared with our team that uh, they've really bought into. Everybody thinks it's a skunk, though. It's a honey badger. <laughs> Zoom in and make sure. Um, yeah, two very close games this past week. Um, two games that um, maybe fans think shouldn't have been as close as they were. What, what do you think about this past week? Yeah, man, here, here's the thing. I, I think uh, – you know, I follow you on Twitter too, man. You, I, I saw you, you know, I, I was going to almost text you about that. But here's the deal, man. Like, at the end of the year, nobody, nobody cares what the scores were. All they care about is if you win or you lose. And, and I think winning on the road is extremely hard, you know. Um, and it doesn't matter what, who you're playing, where you're playing. I mean, winning on the road is hard. And, and so we went down and won two really hard road games. And I think if, if you look at uh, the team's records, you could say, hey, why are those games so close? Um, if you look at their scores that they've had, then you would understand, well, every game's pretty much been close, you know. Um, and so uh, Real Grand Valley, their whole season has been, man, they've got behind and they fought back. And it was no different than our game. Uh, we were very fortunate how that game finished. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a win. You know, it's in the win column. And then uh, Lamar added some players that they haven't had all year. <laughs> One of them is a high-level transfer that played extremely well and uh, that – we were not prepared for him to be there. We were actually preparing for another player on their roster to come back uh, who didn't come back just yet. And so, um, but our guys did, did a great job, uh, I think, of adjusting to that and, uh, and making, you know, making adjustments to personnel. I heard Julie talking about it. I mean, personnel is the whole deal. And, uh, you know, with us right now, defensively, um, I think we, we still lead the country in turnovers forced and, um, and turnover margin, and, and people know that. And what they've, they've done is they've stopped trying to run their stuff. And all they're doing is spreading the floor now and, and, and making it a one-on-one -on -one game. And so we've got to adjust to that a little bit um, and, and maybe make some changes defensively because uh, if guys aren't going to run their stuff, they're going to spread the floor and it becomes a one-on-one -on -one match. We've got to do some stuff to help help our guys that are out there on an island. So it seems like you rotated a lot of people out this week. You know, what is it, what is it that your subs are bringing in to the game? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, depth is, is key. Um, and, you know, I, I do think we have some depth, you know, and so – we're trying to utilize that. I think I, I kind of went away from that. I've talked about it before. I trust some of these guys that have been around the program for so long um, that, um, you know, I, I just trust them, you know. And, and uh, I kind of went away from the bench for a few games there. And so we've – that was one of the commitments I made to myself was, man, to get back to the bench and, and play them. And uh, – because they're, they're doing a great job. And each game is somebody different. You know, I thought uh, Jay Sean Jackson played great at Rio Grande Valley. Um, and then obviously Emmanuel Allen, uh, I thought play and, and, and Tobias Cameron started for us, but uh, both those guys played really good in, at Lamar, and uh, we just got to trust those guys and play them more minutes, especially as Arion Simmons is still trying to get his win back. Um, you know, the him being sick really took the wind out of him, and uh, he's he's just now kind of. You know, I think I think Saturday was the first time he kind of started to feel, you know, normal again in terms of conditioning wise, and uh, and so. Uh, I, I think I tried to play him a little too much when he came back. And, uh, but I, I think the bench has been great. Uh, we're going to continue to trust them, and, and hopefully I think it will help us in the future too moving forward. Well, even though Arion's getting his win back, I mean, Wednesday he shot that game-winning three. Um, you know, against our UCRTV, you know, you're playing them again on Saturday. You were attacking the basket. You got the fouls. They even had to get that guy go to the locker room, <laughs> put on the jersey, come out cold. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, into Saturday, are you going to try to attack the basket and try to draw those fouls 
Yeah, I think so. And first on Arion, man, he did hit the game winner, but he also shot one off the backboard two possessions earlier. So I keep reminding him of that, you know. Um, but uh, but I, I think that I think with us attacking the bat, we've got to adjust to how the game's being called. It's a different league, and and we have officials from different areas of the country, and and uh, you know it shouldn't be that way, but it is that way. Um, and so I don't think we did a very good job early of adjusting. You know, to because the, the games have been called consistently, um, and so that's on us to to adjust to that. And and so I do think that that we've got to attack the basket more. And I think we did that. Um, if you look at our, our free throw numbers, now we didn't shoot it very well Saturday, but uh, we did on on Thursday or Wednesday, uh, which is a big reason why we won the game. But I think we just got to get to the free throw line. We got to attack. If those are going to be fouls, and we've got to attack more and um, and stop selling so much, you know, for the perimeter stuff. Not a whole lot, man. Um, you know, kind of, I mean, it's new. Um, it's a new coach, too. Uh, I've watched them play quite a bit this year, but not really in terms of us. You know what I mean? I haven't been watching them for us. I've been watching them play other people. Uh, but uh, they're, they're actually a really good team, man. I mean, they uh, he's doing a heck of a job. They run good stuff. Uh, defensively, they're going to change it up on us a bunch, and that's something that we've got to adjust to. I mean, we can't just, you know, Go, you know. I think it's a big thing, though. We've we've got to get back to, and we we've done this a little bit, but we've got to get back to turning guys over and scoring off of that uh, to be successful. And and where that's gone, I was overthinking that a little bit. I think people are just spreading us out now, so it's hard to turn people over when it's a one-on-one game. And uh, and so we've got to find ways to, to mix things up a little bit and uh, and turn Chicago State over. If we can do that and score off of our defense, uh, I like our chances. If not, it's it's going to be a dogfight. I think we're good right now. Um, you know, Wednesday, Saturday didn't really help us last week. I think this week it will, you know, because we're sitting here in Abilene. Um, last week the travel was crazy. Um, it's, it's nothing like what Julie's about to have to do, <laughs> you know. But um, but it, it was, you know, a lot of bus, a lot of bus hours, man. And uh, that, that just takes it out of you. And so, uh, but we did get, you know, we, we have got some rest. I, I think not playing Thursday, Saturday helped us a little bit. Uh, and then doing that again this week. Uh, but we should be fully healthy and, and ready to go. And so hoping we can we can show that. Well, we got to take care of business, man. We, we, I mean, it's, it's on us. You know, we can't sit here. I heard somebody talking the other day about, you know, well, if, if, if this, this team loses and this team loses, and then we, we can't worry about all that. All we have to do is worry about how to, how to beat Chicago State. Uh, and then if, if we can take care of business on Wednesday, then we got to figure out, okay, how do we beat Rio Grande Valley again? Because um, we, we know that what happened last week probably will never happen again. <laughs> so, um, you know, we – uh, you know, I told our guys, you know, we, we've got to earn wins. Uh, we've got to deserve wins. And I know some people would think maybe we didn't deserve to win those games. I disagree. Um, you know, I think we did a lot of stuff in those games uh, to deserve to win. And, and I think if you, if you really watch those games last week, we got back to kind of who we, we – I mean, we've been back a little bit uh, since the Cal Baptist game, but we were taking, we were taking charges all over the place. Um, you know, we had a couple – crazy flagrant one calls that were called against us that aren't really flagrant fouls. But um, I understand why they were called, but it's because we were playing aggressive and physical. And, uh, I mean, we win the game on Saturday on a charge call. I mean, that's ACU basketball. And so if we can continue to do that, and, and that's what we weren't seeing for a while, you know. Um, and, and I think we're – I'm seeing that all over the place. I and mean, people keep talking about the charge Emmanuel Allen took. But, I mean – Let's not forget about the, the big-time offensive rebound that Corian Mason had. I mean, the possession before um, that was unbelievable. We, we took a, a bad contested shot, and Corian came from out of nowhere, put his waist on the rim, grabbed the ball, and put it back in. And that was actually the game-winning shot, you know. And, and so we're making championship plays again. And, and uh, we've got to, we can't just be satisfied with that, with these couple wins. We've got to continue to do that because uh, it's not going to get any easier. Good.